Hello. Hello, Devin. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year again. <laughs> yep, here we are in 2017. Yep. Our stream live, our January 14th web webisode. Mm -hmm. Beginning our seventh year. Yep. Unfortunately, Charles can't start it off with us this time around, but we're going to talk about tonight some fun things. Yeah, there's our there's our splash screen. There you go. Very good. So I thought you know we we were talking earlier. You know what about are there heroes and heroines in art? Mm -hmm. And I would say yes, there are, and that's what we'll talk about tonight. And we're going to start off with one of our heroes of our own, no less than Charles Smith. Yep. And I'd give him a middle name if I knew what it was, <laughs> but I don't think he has. He says one. he doesn't have one. Right. But this was something that just recently happened on the Alabama News Center. January 9th, this article was featured on their webpage. Right. So I thought it'd be fun to share that tonight with folks and let them know some nice pictures they had of Charles there. And it's a great little article talking about him starting you know, as an angry mm -hmm. Vietnam vet and how art helped, helped how he, him. How he actually got into the art, too. How he got yeah. into the art. So we had a little video we'd share tonight and show everybody. So okay. we thought we'd start with that. Didn't have it in high school, didn't even have any exposure to it. And it was more like going to Mars and looking at an alien and what is this? And then you making stuff and you make these little crude things. You get to the point that I made this. This is, this is mine, although it's crude, but it's my stuff. I got into ceramic when I was in college and I took a ceramic course, fell in love with it. Uh, I just had that, that energy that I had to release you know, being a uh, product of the Vietnam War. And I just uh, had to have something to do, something that I could control. And it took years to figure that out. But I, I did find out that I really uh, enjoyed clay, although I didn't want to be a, uh, an artist. Well, then again, my psychiatrist said that, you know, that, that would save me. So that, that was what the, <laughs> that, that was a good point down through the years. That, you know what really uh, saved you was your art. My pottery, when you look at the description of it or the style, it's more of a southern Afrocent. I've got the stylized imagery. You have fish and birds and serpents and that kind of stuff. Well, on this particular pot, this is a spinoff of a Nigerian wedding pot. The acorn's been going for about maybe the last five or six years. So that's a standard, and people pick up on that. Here, for years, I was using the, uh, the church key. So I used that. That's a standard signature. And then I used the stylized fish. And then I used that uh, sort of half moon cut to represent uh, water. So you got a lot of different little elements in. And that's just the way I work. It's not taking a design that's already been done. This is things that I accumulated over a period of years. Less is more. Because what I was doing before I had that aha moment was I was putting everything that I ever thought of was on, on a pot, top to bottom. I mean, I had to prove to folks that I was the man that I, less is more. That was it. And when you start balancing things out with free space and just need to be zero in here on this piece, it's like, and, it, and I think I was in it about 15 years nice. before that happened. It's like, now nah, I'm an artist. I feel it now. I got it now. This is steam. Oh, I've been doing it so long. Let's see, it's been exhibited at the Smithsonian, the Dallas Museum, the Mobile Museum of Art have a, a good collection, uh, the Georgia Museum of Art, uh, the New Orleans Museum. The bulk of it is in the uh, private collection. And then I got work that's all over the, uh, well, I would say all over the world. What I would love is to uh, get a MacArthur Genius Award. <laughs> you know? I would love to be on the cover of Rolling Stone. You know, I'd like to be on 60 Minutes. It's a lot of things that I, I would love, but if it happens, it's happening. It's just that, that's just a part of the, uh, it's, it's the part of the beast. That's just what I am. I'm, a, I'm just a part of That's all it is. You know, it's, 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 it's no big name to it. You ask, what do you do? I'm just a part of it. It's a love-hate relationship. It has its good days and bad days, but you got to learn how to walk away from it. And it's always the human element, never the material. The material is always kind, but when you start dealing with the, 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 the social elements that come in your life and mess up your creativity, you got to learn how to back off. I remember years ago is that when, when things kind of got boxed in, is always keep a fishing pole near the door. So when it looks like it's 
You finna hit the fan, grab your pole, get in the truck, and go. All right. Well, that was interesting. That little in there. <laughs> that's a good video, and that's yeah. Charles Smith, our own art hero of our extreme right. life. So, well done, Charles. It was a great interview. A lot of fun. Enjoyed yep. that. We wanted to share that tonight. Now, you know, we're talking about the idea of heroes and art, but what about the idea of heroines? Yeah. Not the drug. No. But a female hero. Right. And doesn't everybody like a heroine? Yeah, everybody loves them. All right. But what about the unsung heroine? Okay. And tonight... I bet there's a bunch of them, but we're going to be specific. There are, and we're going to, tonight on Our Extreme Live, we've got a little bit of something we're going to share tonight. We're going to present tonight on Our Extreme Live. Da, 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 da. Well, I should have had my sound effects ready. Well, that's okay. I just <laughs> did the sound effects. We're going to show the unsung heroines of the <clears throat> Art Patrons League. Right. Now, let's get a quick definition in here. What is a heroine? A woman who, in the opinion of others, has, a, has special achievements, abilities, or personal qualities, and is regarded as a role model or ideal. And that's straight yep. from dictionary.com. That's authoritative. And tonight we're going to talk about a group of women here along the Gulf mm -hmm. Coast, Mobile area, Mobile, Alabama area, that formed long ago, and this is the first heroine of the group. She was the founder and first president, Patsy Lowe. Started it all. And she was the president in 1964-65. But I want to share a quote that she gave. I think this defines a lot. Mm -hmm. Our resources are unlimited, our talents unheard of, our ability for accomplishing breathtaking. There is no room in this group for whiners or the can't be doneers. Anything <laughs> is possible, and don't doubt me, because I've seen it happen. She's a can-do person. That's a heroine there. Get her done. <laughs> so I thought that was great. So that's the beginning of it. And a quick little history lesson. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. The Mobile Museum of Art, right now there's a show going on called Outside In, 40 years of, 40 years of acquisitions and by the Art Patrons League. This group helps support the arts. And there's an actual show at the Mobile Museum of Art right now, which will be up through February the 5th. Mm -hmm. So I hope folks can get by and see it. But the Mobile Art Guide was started in 1963. Okay. They opened to the public in 64, and then in 64 the Art Patrons League was formed mm -hmm. by this group of women. And their purpose was to be a volunteer service organization. You can read it here. But the whole idea, they wanted to raise funds for the arts and the Mobile Art Gallery. They did mm -hmm. this on their own time, totally volunteer. They went so far, they even got a historic building, got yeah. it moved, renovated it, and opened up what was called the Art Patrons League I Patio re Gallery. I know that strange little building. And they had an outlet <laughs> for artists and artwork, and funds were raised for the arts through that effort. So that's one thing they did. That was their idea, to foster, promote, and increase benefits, events, projects, and fundraisers that they did. This is just a small sampling. Mm -hmm. They did a lot of things to raise money. So we'll go through them. They had garden parties. Yeah. Get-togethers, art auctions. That's what they did. Starting all the way back in 1965. Mm -hmm. Okay. They had fashion shows. I remember those. Yeah. They yeah. would do fashion shows. <clears throat> they had treasure hunts. I don't remember that. <laughs> These were big events. <laughs> yeah. And, and they used the building down at, at, over by Beller Mall to advertise it. Mm -hmm. But the next slide's interesting. From that treasure hunt, they presented a check for $10,000. Wow. That's some serious money. In 1973, it was In 1973, big money. Yeah. yeah. And they raised it all from that event. All right? Mm hmm so that's part of the idea of what these ladies were doing. 1973, my utility bill was $15. Well. Shows you how much money that is. Back then, that was a <laughs> lot of money. Not only did they do that, they made calendars. They sold mm -hmm. calendars, <coughs> which would feature artwork of local artists. In like, fact, like one of the local one artists. One artist here. Yeah, who's yeah. that fun looking yeah, fellow? Yeah, look at that guy. But I, yeah, well, 1983, I did the calendar, did all the artwork. Mm -hmm. But those phones were used to support arts in the community. And this will give people, I don't have time to read it all, yep. but this list where the art money was being spent, and it's all over the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they unselfishly raised money on their own time, their own efforts, volunteer group. At one time, they had almost 400 volunteers. Mm -hmm. They did everything involved in doing it at no cost to anybody but themselves. <coughs> and they raised a lot of money and gave it away. One of the things they did do, they gave money to local students for scholarships. 
and education. <laughs> and they did that for quite a few years. In fact, I think we have an example of a yeah, scholarship. Yeah, I think so. Well, look at there. Looky there. <laughs> now, these three people here, Denise Walcott, Karen Putman, and a fellow named David L. Simmons. Hmm. 1975. Yeah. And our Patriots League scholarship. And that's now, one of my pieces back then. I have right the pleasure you. of knowing each and every one of those individuals. Yep. And they were all very good artists. And <laughs> and we just had to share this. 1975. Yep. That's the look, baby. That you was it. it. I you had, had it down. It. And that was my look there. So that David was the look. And, and I won a $1,000 scholarship. That, yeah, paid for a whole year of college. That's a major amount yep. of money back at that time period. Mm -hmm. So that they used money for that. That jacket, and I didn't even play golf. No. But man, you were a trendsetter. <laughs> okay, now this I found interesting. They did an outdoor art show, but they started it in 1965. Mm -hmm. That was now, early. That's a way back while, wow, and it was a humble beginning. Now the first show, if I remember right, if I remember right, they had 50 artists. Mm -hmm. You paid money to buy about 10 feet of running fence to whom you work off of. Mm -hmm. They had 10,000 people show up the first show. Hmm. Now if I was 50 artists, I'd go for 10,000 people. Oh yeah. Up. Yeah. But they did the shows and for many, many years, 40 years, and this was an interesting shot in 1977, 78. Mm -hmm. And the, see the fair crowd? 30,000 yep. people coming to I it. I remember they those They got days. up to 40,000, 50,000. At one time they were attracting, they had 250 artists in the show. They had a lot more people applying. It was a juried application show. Mm -hmm. Not everybody could just get in. I've got a little close-up from that one I want to share. Yeah. That is Charles Smith at his booth in 1977. Yep, one of his first shows. Yeah, that's long a long time ago. Long time ago. That's a shot we had of Charles back then. Mm -hmm. So that's ancient history. Some skinny guy there. And here's another shot of, of outdoor art shows. Yeah. A couple interesting fellows involved in that photograph <laughs> right there, David. Right with his the, artwork, serographs at that point. Up in the middle. Yep. Top and Charles to the left. Yeah, bottom left there, and that's Charles with his booth and a various artist. Mm -hmm. So that went on for 40 years. The last show was in 2004, September. Yep. Okay, another thing these ladies did, the Art Patriots League, they, they raised funds to put art in public places. Mm -hmm. And they put it everywhere. They did a lot of outdoor sculptures. Mm -hmm. They had this fellow at the top left. was a guy named Alan Shields, a nationally known artist. They were involved with getting a piece secured. We're talking about a piece that hung up in the air, had a 12-foot diameter, and ran for 75 feet. Mm. It hung in the theater at the Mobile Civic Center. They were also mm -hmm. involved with uh, Joe Hess sculptures. Up there in the top right, there's mm -hmm. a piece by an artist named Lynn Emery, Ariel, she's from New Orleans. They had uh, Ida Colmar, a major nationally known artist, outdoor sculpture from the Art Museum. Mm -hmm. Artwork by a fellow named Tom Tilliard, mm -hmm. and thought I'd share another thing. Charles <laughs> just keeps showing up yeah, and showing does. up. There's <laughs> Charles again with Alan Shields at the opening. Mm -hmm. So Charles was there. The guy got everywhere. Charles <laughs> is everywhere. It's up here tonight. He keeps moving. He was everywhere, but he's not here everywhere, with us but tonight. Here tonight. But everywhere, everywhere yeah. but here. But he gets around. He does get around. So my question was, and I think I've made the point, how beneficial was the Art Patrons League? I think mm -hmm. you should consider the following. Right after everything got started, you know, we had, back then the city had a three commissioner system, mm -hmm. that was a form of government. It was hard economic times. Because of that, the budget for the city had to be cut. The new commissioners had to cut a lot of appropriations, and they did. They ended up having to cut the art gallery from 64000 roughly down to 20000 That's, that's a, a big cut. That's a 69% decrease in yeah. funding. They also had to cut the board money in half. So this was a major financial blow. Mm -hmm. And at the time... The it could have shut down the place. It could have shut down yeah. the place. They're wondering, how can we even keep the lights on? You know, mm -hmm. it's, and how do you pay people? You know, how do you have a staff? Right. Well, in steps the Art Patrons League. In 1967, after these budget cuts had been implemented, the following statement was recorded. This is what they wrote in their board meeting. At the October board meeting, your board, the Art Patron League's board, sent to the board of the Mobile Art Gallery their formal proposal of help, both financial and volunteer. This was read to the Mobile Art Gallery board and was incorporated in a complete report submitted to the city commissioners. Hmm. So it went to the city and got approved. It was an important factor in the effort to keep the gallery open in spite of the drastic cuts in the budget. And this was directly from their newsletter. It can be said at this time that without the help of the Art Patrons League, the Mobile Art Gallery might not have survived. Hmm. I think that's more than likely true. Yeah. I think they're heroes, but I presented the cases for you to decide. 
But I think in the art world, these are true cultural heroines right. in our very own area. That a lot of people don't even know this is going on because they didn't do it for themselves. They <coughs> did it for mm -mm. the community. Not only, they bought art supplies. They were all stuff, volunteers. All volunteer. So once again, at the Mobile Museum of Art, currently there is the art show, the exhibition, Outside In, which features 40 years of acquisitions. They helped the museum obtain over 250 pieces of artwork through their generous funding. Mm -hmm. And that's what this show's about. There's about 90 pieces on display in the exhibition. Couldn't show everything. Mm -hmm. But that's actually what's there. Nice looking show. It is a good looking show. And when does it end? It actually, the last day will be Sunday, February the 5th until 5 o'clock. Okay. And featured, once so, again, here's that Charles guy showing up and David Sim. Yeah, how about that? Both of you have pieces that are actually featured in this exhibition. Large pieces, yeah. Which were obtained through purchase awards during the mm -hmm. Art Patron League's Outdoor Art and Craft Show. So we wanted to share that tonight with everybody just to let mm -hmm. them know what these women did. They are true heroines of the art. So go out and see it. Yeah. It won't be up much longer. A little, a little less, less than, than a month, month now. A little less than a Two month. Two and a half weeks. So. And hope everybody will get out and look at it. And by the way, I'm the fellow that curated it. It was a lot of That's fun right. to do. That's right. I had the pleasure of meeting a lot of these women at the time, and, and they were mm -hmm. tremendous help to the community. So yeah. I want to share that tonight. So I thought that would be fun to share. Anything I, else you want to bring up tonight? No, I, I think that was great. I think a lot of, lot of information people don't know about. Big Buck misses you, Charles. Uh, yeah, right. He misses you. <laughs> So he was waiting for you, but you didn't make it tonight. Yeah, but he was our like big said, buck handler. Charles was everywhere else, though. <laughs> everywhere else. Island Shields opening. He's on the internet. <laughs> he's at, you know, he just, you never know. The guy's everywhere. He gets around, like you said. So, all right. So, there we go. I'm going to hand off big buck to you tonight. All right. Well, thank you all for watching. And we're looking forward to a new year of, of webisodes here at Artstream Live. Mm -hmm. No telling what we'll come up with next. You never know. No. We know. <laughs> but we'll find out. And, <laughs> Big and buck could lay an egg. We don't All know. All right. Well, Charles, hope you have a good evening. We miss you tonight, my friend. Adios. Adios.